my god, welcome to my new background. Can we get an amen? You guys, I am really excited about this one. Comment down below and let me know what you think. Yay or nay? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mariam. In today's video, I am doing a full face of first impressions, testing out a lot of new makeup, some of which you all requested. Of course, I'll be teaching you how to do this look with a full tutorial. I gotta say, this was one of those unique kind of first impressions where everything was going my way, nothing was really misbehaving. So it's a first of its kind kind of video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Comment down below if you have any questions. Remember to subscribe if you aren't already. Hit that notifications bell, you know the drill. And let's get to this first impressions, new makeup, full face tutorial. Now the only thing that's done on my face are my eyebrows and that's because I don't have any new makeup to test out in this video. I did test out some new eyebrow makeup in my previous video. You guys can check that out. But today my brows are done and I'm gonna begin with primer. I have a number of primers in front of me, namely this Tarte Base Tape Hydrating Primer. Every time I see the word tape in any of Tarte's products, I think shape tape and I get very giddy. But this one is a hydrating primer and because I am oily, I'm not gonna hydrate the center of my face. I'm gonna use a different primer for that. I'm just gonna apply this hydrating one on the perimeter of my face. If you are a dry skin type, then this might be a good primer for you, but you know, it's my first time using it, so we'll see how it goes. Speaking of shape tape, I also have this shape tape pore putty also from Tarte. Pore and prime bomb is what it's called. Mmm, it feels extremely, extremely slippery and very, very greasy. I just don't see that working for someone like me. Although, as I'm blending it out, it does look like it's mattifying my skin on the back of my hand. I'm gonna test this out on a safe spot. I'm gonna test this out on my forehead because my forehead is usually less oily than my nose and my porous areas. Feels kind of greasy, not gonna lie. And then for the center of my face, I'm gonna use this new Smashbox Photo Finish Minimize Pores Primer. All right, this feels like a little traditional pore primer type. I'm gonna start pressing it into my skin around the nose. It's definitely mattifying and it's definitely smoothing out the skin as far as I can tell. I have two foundations, actually three, that I'm really dying to test out, but the third one is somehow lost in the mail. Maybe it's still on its way here. I'm talking about the new Hourglass foundation that I am just so eager to get my hands on. Hourglass told me that they sent it out. I haven't received it yet. Instead, I have this Dior Backstage Face and Body Foundation, and I also have this L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour fresh wear foundation. I think I'm gonna use them equally. The Dior on the perimeter of my face because I feel like it's not as full coverage and then I'll do the infallible on the center of my face. Let's go for it. All right, so this Dior foundation is in the shade 3W. W, let me shake it up. Got a little ball inside, that's cool. I'm gonna apply some to the back of my hand. I'm gonna use this Urban Decay brush to apply this one all over the perimeter of my face. I really like the color. It's definitely a warm undertone, but it's not orange. When we say warm, we do not mean Oompa Loompa. We actually mean golden and glowing like a goddess. Man, this foundation is gliding on so beautifully and so smoothly that I almost wanna wear it for my entire face. Now, I do think this foundation is kind of on the pricey side, but I gotta tell you, these Dior foundations, the original Forever foundation and also the Air Flash foundations are just so buttery. They are just so disgustingly amazing. Oh, there I go, applying the foundation to my forehead, even though I wanted to use the L'Oreal foundation. I'm gonna use just a little bit of that L'Oreal foundation on my forehead, just to see what the difference is. Honestly, this applies really nicely. I do like the texture of this foundation. I would even say that it's kind of similar to the Dior texture. It's very liquidy, not patchy whatsoever, very easy to apply, very easy to blend out, and it looks flawless. I'm gonna use a little bit of that one right here on the center of my face, but do we want a wear test on this? I am looking good. I am looking fresh to death. And if you're wondering what shades I am in the Infallible, I mix the 465 and the 455. They're kind of similar, but the 465 is just a little bit more green. Let's do concealer. We have Cover FX. We have Laura Geller Spackle. I also have this Revlon Antioxidant Candid Concealer, and it's new. And of course I have my NARS backup just in case all of these fail. Let's start with this antioxidant concealer from Revlon. Still in the little plastic packaging. Kind of a cool little tube. A giant doe foot applicator, by the way. 
Ooh, that is way too light for me. And the texture feels just a little bit sticky. Let's see if I can buff that out. Actually, it's not terrible. I don't know if it's these studio lights that are making me kind of accept this color choice probably looks absolutely insane in daylight, but actually blending out pretty well. Definitely, definitely very bright, but we can make it work. All right, next I have this uh, Laura Geller Spackle Concealer, which is more like a peachy, orangey sort of undertone. Let's see what we can do here. Laura Geller is an interesting brand. They have amazing highlighters and they have pretty good lipsticks as well, but I haven't really tried a foundation from them where I can say that I love it. Well, that doesn't look half as bad. I think I'm gonna toss this Candid Antioxidant Concealer in shade 22. It's just way too light for me, but I am gonna grab a different shade and hopefully that one will work. The Laura Geller Spackle Concealer in shade Medium. Another promising product. I'm gonna put it to the side right here. I also have this Cover FX Power Play Concealer in the shade G Medium 1. I assume G means gold. I'm gonna just add this to the areas that I wanna brighten and I'm not gonna judge my appearance right now. I'm gonna blend everything out. It's always so weird testing new products that you've never tried before because I apply them the same way that I would apply my Tarte Shape Tape or the products that I'm so used to using that when I actually apply them on, I freak myself out. That's why as a beauty influencer, I always give myself a trial period. I always give myself a learning period to kind of get to know the product. But first impressions, there's no trial period here. And so far, I ain't mad at any of these products that I've tried. I'm almost waiting for the catch. Where's the catch? I'm gonna contour with my usual Fenty Beauty matchstick. And once I'm done, I'll be right back. For my powders today, I have two new translucent setting powders that I wanna test out. One is the Elsie Cosmetics Light Medium Translucent Powder. And the second is a translucent banana powder from Milani. How do you open this? How do you open this? Is this a, is this a, oh. All right, I'm gonna go with Elsie first. I absolutely love my Elsie bronzers. I have high hopes for the setting powder because Lilith, who is the creator of Elsie Cosmetics, is an amazing makeup artist and she knows what she's doing. I love her product and I trust her product so much that I am gonna use this confidently under my eye. Oh girl, this is beautiful. Or how can I tell off the bat that it's good. Well, the fact that I'm pressing it in and it's going on translucent, you're not seeing a white film over it. The fact that it's minimizing my pores and not making them more visible is another plus. I am seeing a bit of creasing right here under my eye, but that has nothing to do with the powder. That's actually the concealer's fault. I actually just fixed it rather easily. Just gonna beat some and dust some all over my face, all over my forehead. Use a keeper. Now let's test out this Milani powder on the perimeter of my face. What I like about this packaging is that it actually has a dial, boom. But I don't like the fact that the cap doesn't have any type of silicone protectant to actually release the powder onto, which Elsie's did have. This banana color looks just a bit pinkish, in my opinion, but it is micro fine. So let's see where this takes us. So far, so good. Nothing too crazy. Let's see if I can apply this precisely and see if there's a difference. Ah. Okay, I see a difference. So this banana powder from Milani Cosmetics has just a little bit more luminosity, whereas the LC is completely matte, it's flat, it's one color, translucent. This one has some shimmery pigments in it, which is good if you want to reflect, if you want to create an illusion. So I will give this another shot. I will test it out on its own just to see how it sets the rest of my face. But so far, out of the two of these, LC was a clear winner. All right, now that I've done all that, I want to set my face. I I have this CoverGirl Outlast Active Cooling Setting Spray. The mist was just a little unexpected. It was just a little too bleh in your face. I don't know how I feel about that. I far prefer a finer mist so it doesn't create these really wet looking areas. Maybe I need to be a little further. Let's see how that goes. I also have some illuminating drops from Laura Geller called Dew Dreamer Illuminating Drops. I definitely do like this shade called Gilded Honey in honor of their iconic highlighter. I'm gonna dot just a little bit right here on the back of my cheekbone. I like that. Now this color is very iridescent, opal crush, and diamond dust is just a pinch pearly, so I wanna try a little bit of that one as well. Ooh, that is popping, honey. I love the fact that it's not shifting my foundation whatsoever. Ah, you know what? It did shift my foundation just a pinch, but not too bad. Nothing that I couldn't fix just now. For my blush, I have this new Wanderlust Primer Infused Blush from Buxom. This color is called Mykonos. Ooh, that is 
is really pigmented. Was not expecting all that. Blush and I, we're not the best of friends, but I noticed that this was a product that a lot of you guys were interested in when I showed it in my unboxings. Why would you look at that? I actually don't hate it. For my bronzer today, I have this new Il Maquillage Waka Waka bronzer. Wow, that is extremely powdery. I'm gonna start at my temples. Whoa! And I'm gonna try to blend out this whole entire section. This one looks like it needs to be powdered down with something else. Il Maquillage does have some interesting products. This is an Israeli makeup brand. Il standing for Israel and Maquillage meaning makeup in many languages. So no, Maquillage is not my last name. Just like Huda's last name is not Beauty and Tutorials isn't Nikki's last name. <laughs> Alright, that's actually not looking too bad. I do like the color, it's reminding me a lot of the Inglot X JLo bronzer, which is one of my favorites. I am going to start with eyeshadow. Today, I have this 90210 eyeshadow palette. It looks like a DVD of the show, but it's actually a Beverly Hills 90210 inspired eyeshadow palette. Oh my God. 10 shades, four of them can be used as blushes or highlighters, and these six here are eyeshadows. There's also a little mirror in here, and of course, the characters of our favorite show. How many of you guys love 90210? Raise your hand, comment down below, because this was one of my favorite shows growing up. Truth be told, this was one of the shows that helped me learn English. I remember being very little, 10 or 11 years old, and I would watch Beverly Hills 90210 with the closed captioning on, so I would listen, and I would watch, and I would read at the same time. So I was able to learn English within like six months of being in America. So this show has an emotional connection. This hits a warm spot. All right, but before we get to the eyeshadow palette, I have an eyeshadow primer from the drugstore. This one by Revlon that I wanna utilize in today's look. I've stopped using primers, as you guys know, but I did reach back for my Urban Decay Primer Potion in my previous video, which was the one brand tutorial featuring Urban Decay. And I gotta say, I liked what it did for my eyeshadow, although it was harder to blend. Feels kinda silicone-y, but not too much. So there's definitely some grip, but it's not sticky whatsoever. So now looking at this palette, I see there's really only one transition shade and it's this Kelly Loves Dylan. Yeah. I know. Whoa, that pigmentation. I was not expecting that. But apparently, this brand is sold at Ricky's and they have other palettes inspired by other 90s and 80s movies and shows. I really do like this first eyeshadow that I tried. Very pigmented, easy to blend. I think it's kind of a universal shade that will work for a lot of complexions. All right, that's looking good to me. I'm gonna apply a little bit of that same Kelly Dillon to the bottom, just like that. Boy, oh boy, did I also have a crush on Luke Perry. You know, I always liked an older man. Lee is seven years older than me, by the way. Way to go, Sola Look Cosmetics. I think I'm gonna go for this shade here called Emily Brandon, even though Emily was not a very important character. I don't even remember what she looks like, to be honest. Definitely a little bit of fallout with this shade. Let's see if I can apply that with my finger. Oh yeah, way better. Boom. So now for the inner, inner corner, I wanna use this Andrea Brandon. Whatever happened to the actress that played Andrea? It applies well with both the finger and the brush. Yeah, these shimmery shades are nice. So now for the tear duct, I think I'm gonna go for West Beverly High. And I'm gonna add that just right here for a little highlight surrounding my epicanthic fold. I'm gonna add a little bit here into that brow arch. And now I think I wanna add a little bit of this very bronzy peach pit shade. I'm gonna add that right here to the inner portion of my lower lid. Let's test out that black real quick. Dylan loves Brenda. Ooh, blends well, no problems here whatsoever. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that transition crease shade right on top. All right, cool. I think I've said all I have to say about this palette. I think it speaks for itself. For my liner today, I only have one liner that I wanna test out, and it's the new Benefit Roller Lash Liner. Boom. Tried it the other day on my hand, and I was pleasantly surprised by how black it was, and also by how non-transferable it was. I would say this is a really easy to use felt tip marker type of liner. It's very precise. You can create a clean wing. I have a feeling it'll be a new favorite. I mean, I gotta find a product in here that I'm not loving. So far, everything's been cooperating. I have this new 24 hour waterproof eye pencil in brown from my girl Sona's makeup line called Persona Cosmetics. So since it says waterproof, I'm going to confidently 
glided across my waterline while talking through it and not even messing up. I do love a good waterproof liner. You guys may agree with me on this. Some of them do make me tear up. And when you start tearing up, there is absolutely nothing you can do to save your makeup. And it's so frustrating. This one does not seem to be acting out. I'm here for it. For my mascara today, I have this Dior Hypnose Drama, but a lot of you also requested that I test out these new ColourPop BFF Colorful Mascaras. So you know what? I'm actually gonna do the black on black for my top lash line. And then for the bottom, I am thinking I'm gonna do either the blue or the left on red. I am the worst person to test mascara on because I have absolutely no lashes. Unless, of course, I'm the best person to test mascaras on. See where I'm getting at? But this one doesn't seem to be doing anything dramatic to my lashes. It is a thinner formula, so it's separating them. It's not really coating them, adding just a bit of color, but it's nothing too heavy, nothing too dramatic. For the lower lash line, I think I wanna go with the red, just because I have a little bit of red and purple happening on the top of my lid. Whoa, this is really, really red. Here goes. Okay, it's not really super, super noticeable. Not really crazy dramatic. If anything, it's working with my my lower lash line. Interesting, definitely interesting. I have a new pair of lashes that I wanna test out today and it's these Huda Beauty Jacqueline number 20 lashes. I don't know if you guys can see, but they have both brown and black bristles, which is kind of cool, I guess. I'm gonna apply these lashes, I'm gonna grab some lip liners and I'll be right back for the rest of the face. So I almost ruined my entire eye makeup with this one Kat Von D Inkwell liner, which I had no idea was actually this color. I wanted to apply it a little bit above my crease just to kind of give it a nice, cute, cut crease look. It, in fact, ended up staining my eyeshadow. So luckily, I had this MAC Dazzle Liner from their holiday collection, so I applied it right on top, and now I need to match this side so I don't look lopsided. Not exactly what I was going for, but it'll work. For my lip liner today, I'm gonna use this Dose of Colors a Drama Lip Liner. You guys might have seen in my unboxings, Dose of Colors just came out with a ton of new lip liners and eyeliners, so I want I'm gonna put these to the use. I decided I'm gonna go for a dark lip today. This one might give Vino a run for its money. Cause Vino is literally the only other lip liner I ever use for darker lip colors. But this one might be my new second. This is Charlotte Tilbury Confident Lips. As much as I love Charlotte Tilbury, these glossy type of lipsticks are just not my forte. And it definitely changes this whole look. But you know what? I think I'm gonna roll with it. Well, hello there. Almost forgot. Highlighter. The one that I'm testing today is this one from Sleek Makeup. I noticed that there are three creams and two highlighters. I'm just gonna use the powder highlighters. Maybe a pinch of this gold one. See, I don't see the point of adding cream highlighters along with powder highlighters. Maybe they should have put them on the bottom so that it doesn't crumble and stick onto those creams. But the highlighter itself is kind of cute. Let's try the pink one. Oh yeah, I see it and I like it. All right. Let's spray one more time. Cover Girl Outlast Active. Far away from my face this time. And let's do the final reveal. All right, you guys, here is my final full face of these first impressions using all new makeup. I gotta say, this was probably my most successful first impressions video tutorial I've ever filmed because everything, and I mean everything, was cooperating with my skin, with my texture, with all the other products. Everything was just blending in and meshing well. Because of that, I'm having a really great day. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this video and this first impressions tutorial. I will see you in the next one. Before you go, check out some of my other videos right here. More first impressions, more new makeup, more reviews, more truth time. I love you guys. I will see you soon. Mwah.